that's the biggest one of the biggest atrocities that Germany is so focused on uh, on the internal combustion engine. Still, instead of going all in battery production and, and even expanding and and getting this technology on European ground, it's it's also bad for uh, with our European red tape bureaucracy that Tesla actually they wanted to build a, a battery factory here as well and uh, they pushed the plans out even they got uh, the incentive already from the European <laughs> Union or it was in the clear but they were like okay I don't know what happened why they ch chose that I think they they chose uh, the US again because the incentives were even better in the exactly. US that's why much higher that's why they that's should exactly. over it's and also the stress of opening something up like this in Europe is is I think also one of the reasons, as you could see with, of course, the protests again uh, f with the expansion of Giga Grünheide again in the north. Yeah. Um, I don't know. That's that's such a typical German thing to do um, to to we want change, but not in our front lawn, not not on our pro well, porch. I, I, um, I mean, it's incredible. Yeah. yeah, it's incredible because the yeah. opportunity for, you know, employment, everything is, is washed down again. I, I've never been a a big fan of of implementing the European Gigafactory in in Germany. I mean, I love Germany. I am German. Yeah, me too. But I, I <laughs> yeah, just, me too. Exactly. I, I just I just felt all the time that this was inviting trouble at the table, um, <laughs> and it's proven to and it's proven to be right because you know Tesla is doing the most for environmental issues than any other car builder or even no matter what manufacturer, right? And this is the, the cleanest company you can imagine with the means we have on this planet. So the 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 fact that obviously Elon being very political and now hated by the rather left side of the political spectrum doesn't help. But but even before that, I mean even before 2020, the Tesla wasn't welcomed by by a lot of those uh, environmental agencies and, and everybody who could who could protest protested the fact that this expansion was not favorably seen in the referendum of the of the town is not binding is not legally binding but i think yeah. it's just a wake up call to everybody thinking okay so if they don't want it is it really worth investing these millions and billions again because If at every little step there is so much you know resistance and so much opposition Oh, uh, you know, how, how much further should we go? The Germans also should know that there's groundbreaking next month in, in Mexico. By not mm -hmm. being favorable to, to Tesla's expansion, you're actually making the decision that sooner or later the, the production is not going to be in Germany anymore. Where maybe, like I said, maybe shouldn't have never been. I think I think Elon was very proud to do it in Germany, in a in a part of Germany that needed you know, a, a good push for, for manufacturing because that's not yeah. where manufacturing traditionally was. But out of his well thinking and 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 rather generous approach, he, he's learning a tough lesson that Germany is not today favorable to manufacturing and is not favorable to expansion and to businesses. So he actually said in the last earnings call, which I listened to, I don't know how many times, I, I love those earnings calls. I mean, I, mm -hmm. I, I can't believe when these earnings calls are out there, there are all these people screaming on X, oh, it was such a bad earnings call. And I said, no, you just didn't listen. <laughs> If you would listen, you would get so much out of it. But anyway, so, so in the last one, he said, um, when we're ready with the next generation car, which he expects to end of 2025, but they're actually building the pilot line now as we speak in Austin. So they're doing this in Austin because that's where they have the manpower and that's where they have the brains. That's where the engineers are sitting and they're, I, I visited the Cybertruck. I'm sorry, I'm always getting to the next story, but I'm yeah, coming no back to yeah, the main that's story. Mm -hmm. When I visited the Cybertruck production line, I mean, you know, I have no clue about production, right? I come from the finance field. I'm a mom of five. I have, I have no clue. I'm not a big mouth, but no clue. Uh, but I was speechless. I was walking for miles this line and I saw these robotics and I saw these Tesla employees showing us at every stage of the production line what they're doing here, showing the example of what's going to pr be produced, how the car produces, uh, progresses to the next. I was speechless. I, I'm, I still haven't you know, digested it all. And that is old school. That was November. We're now February. That is old school compared to what they're currently doing for the next generation. So for so, so the next generation car, the production line is laid out currently and optimized in Austin. And once it is functioning, I mean, anybody who has been in a car manufacturing company understands what I'm talking about. Every step 
is then optimized that, you know, when the car passes through, everything happens as smoothly and professionally and perfectly as possible and it moves further. Once this is completely optimized, and I think the the bot is going to have a big role in that, then they will set it up in Mexico because by then, so now it's groundbreaking. Remember, they hope to build it in six to nine months. So that would mean end of the year. Perfect. That's when they expect that production line to ready. Then they will implement it in, in Mexico. And then they will have two sites where this is produced, which is Austin and Mexico. And he said, and then by the end of that year, we are going to decide what's the third one, right? And he also had said last time he was in Berlin a couple of months ago, you are a good candidate to be the site for the next. But I mean, just now, 3,000 people difference in a referendum will probably have as a consequence that the chances of Berlin being the next generation production line just went down. I mean, they may eventually get it, but since they're making it so complicated, this is a a competitive world. It could be China, it could be India, it could be Indonesia, it could be wherever. But by making it complicated, you are actually getting your hopes down. Yeah, absolutely. That's pretty sad. And one interesting thing is when you also compare it, that's why I think those protesters or or the the people that voted against this um, expansion, I mean, they get their concerns out. I get it. Yeah, this is a big topic there because of the water and stuff like this. But I don't see anybody protesting LEAG, which is the brown coal or a lignite uh, uh, sourcing sure. crawl, crawling company that that um, extracts or extraction company that uses 100 times more water than Tesla, and nobody is protesting there. I I, I don't really get not- it. It's yeah, it's not about that. It's it's about uh, uh, stifling foreign entity that is coming into the country and uh, building stuff up getting getting huge uh, resources also and and uh, yeah actually but add so much value i, I don't get it i don't get it I, it's 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 crazy well, and also I th- yeah and i yeah. do believe i do believe mm. first of all th- there are lots of interests here the interests yeah. of the competitors i don't think that yeah. they are completely neutral in this story i yeah. think they <laughs> yeah. helping a lot to to raise concerns and make sure that people you know get worried and and whatever uh, mm-hmm. The second is there's the whole competition of the whole EV world, right? You have mm-hmm. the the whole petrol conglomerates that are uh, not liking it, that uh, one of their biggest sources of income is is shrinking. Um, and then you have the Elon haters. You have, and this is political or this is personal or this is, I mean, it, it, it just never ends. It never ends. There are people, I, I, I mean, I live in very liberal California. And there are people that are telling me, I hate this man so much. And I said, oh my God, why do you have even so much, you know, I have a lot of love for him, but I build up that love. It wasn't as if I was just falling in love, right? I fell in love with my husband, but not with Elon Musk. I learned to love him. But I mean, how did you learn to hate him? Oh, no, no. I have no clue about anything, but I hate him. I hate him. I hate him. I'm like, okay. okay it's just okay. you just say stuff. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, no. Yeah. Uh, but uh, w- what I wanted also to put in here as a small nugget, I think um, Giga Berlin actually is still very valuable in that sense that when the German OEM struggle, people will go to Tesla and we will have a huge brain drain or brain shift from from people going to Grünheide actually. Already to, happening. To, yeah, it's it's already happening. And um, what I can also see is that having this American model inside of Germany is very good because many workers that work there are amazed how they just can go up the ladder and like, yeah, I'm doing my job and suddenly I'm promoted. It's 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 uh, crazy how how this works there. That oh yes, it's, it's so and and they don't care about anything about uh, heritage or where they come from, if they are Polish or where they where they're from, and um, so they they also take a lot of pride. You can really tell uh, even i mean i've watched a lot of the promo material of tesla themselves but i get the point uh, why this is so interesting for the germans actually to experience something like this um that you even without being unionized or something that's that's a new thing to see that oh i can get a stock compensation that's way better than being unionized maybe so you have to weigh in uh, in that um yeah, th- those, those did things. You and, see, yeah. Did you see, by the way, how IG Metall 
is now trying to <laughs> broker, right? To, to broker <laughs> this, oh, maybe this expansion, we can help to make it happen. Trying to be invited to the to the table. I'm like, what, it, what are you Nobody about? cares I mean, about you. Sorry. Exactly. Yeah, what? Sorry. Trying to sneak in here, right? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's interesting, those, uh, like the system, how um, we also seen those protests in, in, in uh, Sweden and uh, the Swedish model and uh, oh, yeah. with the same topic we have a similar system here i mean the swedes actually go a step further even i would say yeah it's it's crazy to see that the workers actually don't want to be unionized because they get paid better when they're not unionized and they get stock compensation yeah. when they're not unionized so that's a huge incentive for them i get why in germany that's that's the deal you you mostly are unionized and I mean, it's fine most of the time, and I, I get the point, but it makes it sometimes so complicated for the employer actually to uh, move fast. And that doesn't mean that they get rid of all the workers. Uh, that's not the point. Um, and I think that Germany, it's a good thing for Germany that, they, that this yeah. factory is here. And I think they might get the curve around. And I think the polit political will of, of the government actually that is there um, is so big on getting Tesla strong and strong in the region. So I think then they will help them uh, more and more. Even they, they made a task force uh, for going through the permits. I mean, this is unprecedented in Germany. You know, but sure. Nobody from the politics side goes these kind of lengths uh, to, to get but a company do you, there. So, do, do you uh, have new elections in May? Because I read that somewhere. I didn't at all research that yet, but they said that there will be first elections in May. And obviously, depending on those elections, we'll see whether the current quite favorable Mm -hmm. instance this mm -hmm. will still be confirmed by then right yeah this could be i'm not sure when exactly but um i also think that the i hope that <laughs> the change won't be as severe because um we also the, our green party here is <laughs> is not actually viewed very well um they mm -hmm. they screwed up a lot of stuff uh, here and um also we have kind of a conservative approach that, that those those niche parties here we have that are way more conservative and um some some people even say, oh, they are like alt-right in the US kind of. Yeah, it's a huge shift going on and they don't want EVs <laughs> at all. So so no. that's also a problem. So we have like, okay, they're more liberal in the sense of, of uh, yeah, for, for German businesses or in that sense, mm -hmm. but they're kind of not well, they don't receive companies well as well. So so that's, that's yeah, kind of diff difficult thing. But yeah, the hopes are high that, that the party or the candidate gets gets reelected, I hope. Yeah, but we will see what, what's happening there. So I don't have new information or mm -hmm. like I don't have the temperature of, of that 